Inside this slightly smoking box is the most expensive motorcycle I've ever bought in my entire life by like $70,000 more. But before we pop this box open, let me explain to you all the events that actually brought us to here. I just bought a $100,000 motorcycle. Let's get out of here before I have to buy something else. All right, so guys, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity where the National Motorcycle Museum is is closing down and they're auctioning off everything inside here. Now, a few months ago when I found out about this, I was scrolling through the list. There are motorcycles here that I've seen pictures of like my entire life at, at motorcycle dealerships I didn't think actually really existed. They're here and they're for sale. I have the opportunity of buying it. Let's go in there. Let's go see it. This is a huge deal and I want to buy one. I want to buy one and drive one. So let's, uh, let's go see if we can get something. Now here's the fun thing about auctions. You guys know I love going to auctions. The fun thing is you never know what you're gonna get. And you never know if you're gonna get a good deal or a bad deal. I mean, it looks like a lot of people showed up, but wow, that dude got something awesome. But I'm seeing a lot of awesome motorcycles and a lot of people's trucks. That's a cool bike. People are rolling stuff out right now, so we gotta uh, get registered and let's get this going. So we got our registration set up and got our media pass, which allows us to film inside. Unlike that other auction that will remain nameless who no longer lets us film, the NPA. Uh, I've, been, I've been to museums before, but never a museum auction. This is literally my candy store. There's hundreds of bikes here, but only a reasonable amount of bikes that actually interest me. And those are the bikes that I need to put my eyes on before the auction starts in just a few hours. All right, so there's about like, there's 25 bikes and I'm like, ooh, I'd be all about buying those. Like that's a possibility. But then there's like a handful that I really, really want. So let's keep on, uh, let's just start looking at them. The WLA, that, that's not that much better than what mine looked like. Something is making a noise. My audio recorder? Do you have something in your pocket that's making a noise? Like a, like something's playing? Yeah, it's that guy. That's awesome. Yeah, twin Yamaha powered um, streamliner. I don't think I can fit in that. No, that's not what I was looking for. And then I found the seventh bike that I was most interested in, a 53 Harley that someone transversely mounted a Chevy V8 motor in it and connected it to a gearbox. In a time where it was impressive to have 70 horsepower, this thing had 260 horsepower. It was pretty much a modern day boss hoss. Hopefully we're gonna see it today. That's awesome. Check it out, it's another twin engine motorcycle. It's so cool. These are cool. Now this is a bike that I probably gonna be trying to be pretty heavy on. I think what I have is like the civilian version of the papoose, but this is the military version of the papoose that would have actually sat inside of a tube. And I am definitely, I really wanna get one of these. Like they're, they're so cool. I'm super pumped about that. It's the beautiful bike, it's a WR. I think it's claiming 45 horsepower. That's a powerful bike. I don't need another, I, I, might, I might keep an eye on it. I already have a flathead. I want a knucklehead. Those board tracks are so cool. Do you imagine like getting wrecking on that? Splinters and sliding off and dudes running you over on old motorcycles. Steam cycle. I've been actually, I've been, I didn't see this on the list. Comment below if I should build my own steam powered Harley Davidson. Now auctions like this are cool, but when you're walking through here, everything says don't touch and don't sit on and don't try to start. And that's what makes Wheels Through Time such a really unique museum and like one of the coolest museums because everything runs. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be like, let's take this bike off and let's go do a burnout and let's go drive down the street. I don't know if this stuff even runs. I, I don't know what they're... I did this, some of these things may have not been fired up in 20, 30 years. I made an interesting point here, and I'm not quite sure that I completely understood it when I said it, but these bikes are considered museum quality, which sounds uh, prestigious and lofty, but in reality, it means nothing because there's a 90s Goldwing with 250,000 miles on it. How, 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 good, how nice could that actually be? And there's an Evil Knievel bike that has no transmission in it, but you can't actually tell unless you really look really closely. Some guy, some guy told me about it. But basically, once they go into the museum, no one cares if they're ever gonna run again. So, what that means is that buying a bike from a museum might be more of a gamble than what I originally thought. I've owned a couple of these. These are awful, motor <laughs> these are awful motorcycles. It's kind of a funny bike to see at a museum. When if, if, if you saw this bike at a, at a motorcycle auction, it would do no money because no one cares about them. Okay, and this is why me and my film crew got kicked out of NPA for talking trash on a motorcycle that was in a video that came out three weeks after the auction was over. That doesn't really make very much sense to me, but 
whatever. Check this out, Century V-Twin Chief. It's a humongous motor. Look at the size of that engine in there. First of all, it's an ugly looking motor. <laughs> like an awful looking motor. They did try to revive Indian, the brand, multiple times in its past, and then it didn't really actually successfully happen until Polaris bought them in the, I don't know, something. So as I continued on looking for the other six bikes, I saw some really unique bikes that if the price was right, I would have to buy. There was first this beautiful Indian Scat race bike that would be a perfect companion for my WLDR. And then I saw a couple Bruff Superiors, which I know nothing about other than one of them is estimated to bring a whopping $180,000. And then I saw it, the illustrious Harley Davidson Knucklehead said by the few people who are lucky enough to own one to be one of the most enjoyable bikes to ride. And not only are they rare, but they are extremely valuable. I've heard stories of people finding rotted out knuckleheads that have been chained to a tree since World War II, where half the bike has gone back to the earth, still selling for unbelievable numbers. And then I saw an Aerial Square 4, which as far as I know, is the only engine ever made in that Square 4 configuration. And right next to it was the one and only Ferrari motorcycle, which later we learned was not the same Ferrari that makes cars that people drive through cornfields. And then I found the number six bike, which is one of only 660 ever made. All right, so, so this is one of the bikes on my list. This is a Harley Davidson V-Rod Destroyer. I actually have one of these. Well, I have not really talked about it, but it was stolen from me. I'm working on getting it back. I love these bikes. Like, this is how it comes. That's how it comes from the factory. It was one of the only like, Harley Davidson like factory drag bike. It's not street legal. So this is not nitrous oxide. That's an air shifter bottle. I'm gonna be a player at that, at that one, hopefully. Now, this is another bike that I've been really looking to buy one of these. This is an Indian four. Now, normally when you think about the American motorcycle companies, it's all about V-twins and that is, it's been true for a long time, but that's not always been true. And the Indian uh, four-cylinder is one of the smoothest old motorcycles you can buy. Uh, about two years ago, you couldn't touch one of these for less than $100,000. Always wanted to ride one. They look amazing. And it's one of those motorcycles that, that's going to hold their value for a long, long, long time. That, I definitely want to be a player in, in that. Are there more bikes out here? Um, there's some in the front. If you go to the left and go out the, towards the front door, there's some. Okay, this is concrete, I think. I don't want to move that. I don't want to have to move that. So I'm going to avoid buying that. Then I stumbled upon bike number five. Now, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the BMWs. And this, the R12, which I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on. Beautiful bike. It's actually, I think it's the R12 that the R18 is based off of. And um, I love my R18, so I think that'd be really cool. Beautiful bike. I was hoping they would have an R32 here, which is really, really, really rare, and you like they're hundreds of thousands of dollars. But um, these things are actually pretty. Uh, this, this, this should be pretty obtainable. So that little bike is pretty cool. Question is, will it get me home? It's a cool bike. That's called the Black Bomber. I know that. I've read the thing, but it's like the bigger version of like the 305 or this like the CB77, which I really like. And there is one here that I, I want to try to buy. So as I continue looking on for bike number four, which you will absolutely recognize, and it's only one of a few hundred ever made, I came across a few bikes that I've never seen before and might never see again. Like this beautiful Art Deco 1962 Victoria 155. It's cool how in the early days, motorcycles, they were all similar, you know, an engine in the middle of the frame, you know, engine in the middle of a bicycle pretty much. But then you had people who had just completely different concepts and completely different, you know, that's a member like, like Art Deco, you know, style. Oh, that's actually newer, that's actually newer than I thought. Uh, 1962, makes that make sense. That's a beautiful bike. And this motorcycle that was made by Sears, you probably didn't know that Sears made motorcycles also. And then what is estimated to be the most valuable motorcycle at the auction, estimated to cost as much as the average American house today this bruff superior when it's running you know all these things are be moving up and down you can see the lifters and it's all open and exposed and then right before i found the next bike on my list i found a bike that i can never ride because of the name the 1965 allstate twingle a bike that i can never ride but my friend jared decker could absolutely ride all right so we were just talking to a guy and he just said that um what everyone's saying is the the estimates that were on the uh, on the listing of like you know if it said it was going to do ten thousand dollars it was doing triple or quadruple that might be a problem. And then I found bike number four. I don't think it's sold, but I found one of the bikes I'm looking for. It's right behind me. 
This is a Hayes diesel bike. Similar to the one I have, different colors. There's more set up for, I guess, maybe Desert Storm. Also a marine bike. I have no idea whether it runs, I'm sure. Hopefully it's not as busted up as mine was, which mine should be coming back really soon. So I paid 21 for mine. I'm excited to see what this one sells for. If it, goes, if it does crazy money, that means mine might be worth crazy money. These are all the military bikes. That one is very cool. Yeah, look at that. Pull up that Salisbury. That's, a, that's awesome. I would be proud to cruise around the boulevard in that, that Jetson Mobile. Look at that, that's awesome. That's gonna go on the list. Oh, shoot. All right, let's, let, we'll come back to this. Let's not get distracted. A lot of cool stuff here. It's the cool area. Here's a motorcycle. We learned a little bit more about this at the, at the Harley Museum, but apparently every single one of them is considered a copy and all the originals got like destroyed, but I don't know if I believe that. The Easy Rider bike. Now this is gonna be a, gonna be a lot of people who are gonna wanna buy this. It's gonna do crazy money. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm a player with that one. I have no idea what it's worth, but I probably should know. But I'm pretty excited about that one. Things are doing double. Some of the things that they had set on there, especially the board track racers over there, they had for 30 to 40. Yeah. They went for 70. Wow. Yeah. It, may, it may, now makes me think that if, if I get a good deal, maybe, you know what I mean, what's wrong with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a really cool bike. The RD350 is a two-cylinder, two-stroke. That's a CR500. I never heard of that. That's a pretty cool bike. This is the C, oh, this is the CA77. Oh, I have one just like this. I have one just like this, but mine's orange. I was looking for the CB or the Scrambler uh, version of this. I don't really need it. Oh, it's sold. I don't really need another one. I never heard of this motorcycle before. Oh, this is a Seca. I've heard of the Seca 2s. Never heard of the, I've never seen the Seca, the original Seca. Nine, that's a cool looking bike. I've still not seen two motorcycles that I'm looking for, that I'm really interested in finding. There's more bikes. There's more bikes somewhere. I don't know where they're at though. We have to find them. Somehow I'm getting like, I'm not going to all the places. Look at this, kind of a jerk move, Honda. So apparently a, deal, a Wisconsin Honda dealership in the 60s crushed this thing into a cube with a sign saying we are crushing the competition on pricing. But they completely destroyed this motorcycle. I mean, it looks like it wasn't in the best shape to begin with because there's a piston, but still, come on Honda. You are gonna do me like that? Children in Africa could have eaten that motorcycle. This is a motorcycle. Every single 70 year old motorcycle mechanic has a picture of this motorcycle on his toolbox. I saw this thing, I've been seeing this thing my entire life and I didn't, I, I didn't know where the bike was. I didn't know it was, at, it was at a museum. I assumed it got destroyed or whatever, but it's, it's, it's unmistakable and I, check it out, it's just, come on. This is the road dog. This is the picture that's at every motorcycle dealership that's been open for more than 30 years. It's an incredibly famous picture. And then this is the motorcycle. Look, you have like, look, you have hydraulic shocks that push down to level the bike. I have no idea how much it weighs. Statistics, it's got a 2.4 liter motor, two speed transmission, power light transmission. It's 17 feet long. Total one, total cost to build $40,000. Miles per gallon, 25 miles per gallon. It's actually not that bad. I'm a, I'm a player at this bike, because this is awesome. You steer it here. It's got these arms that steer the, <laughs> that steer the front end. This is, I guess, the braking. No, I guess that'd be the throttle. These? Yeah. I don't know. I just think they got some type of beer can, Milwaukee's finest sitting on top. Coolest motorcycle, and if we can't buy it, maybe we need to build one just like this. I mean, it's almost like a, I mean, this is a, this is a, a car power plant, a car, tr power glad car transmission. It goes into some type of a, it goes into here. The drive shaft is on the, the, the transfer case. It runs a drive shaft over here. You have another drive shaft, come over here. You have a differential on this side that plugs into the wheel. So I'm really, really, really excited about that bike. I have no idea what it's gonna do. But uh, I mean, don't you want to see me drive it home? So before I get back to the auction, I want to tell you guys about something that's pretty cool. And that is the sponsor of this video, which is Air Up. Now everyone knows that you should drink more water. I should drink more water. You should drink more water. Everyone knows that. The problem is you drink as much water as I do, you get, you get tired of it. It's the same old water. The other problem is every time you mix stuff with water or drink flavored water or something like that, there's something else in it. There's sugar in it. There's, there's calories in it. There's, there's some type of chemical in it. That's not good for you. With Air Up, they get these flavor pods. So in reality, you're still only drinking water, but you're tricking your mind into thinking that you're drinking whatever flavor pod you have on your, your bottle. Let me show you how it works. The flavor pod goes on here just like this. And there's actually 
a little hole right there that you open up when you pull the flavor pot up a little bit and then it kind of aerates the water with the flavor taste is mostly connected with your smell that's why when your nose is all clogged up or you're sick you don't feel like you can taste anything but the best part about it is they got all these awesome different flavors they got peach they got blueberry watermelon umber they got raspberry lemon, they got wild berry, they got lemon, cherry, apple. I was just drinking tangerine, but actually I'm gonna switch it out with a uh, with the watermelon because that sounds amazing. The new one on, lift it up. It's got that nice hint of watermelon. So it's, it, it really, it's a, it's a simple way to trick your mind and to drink water, stay hydrated, and it's it's more fun than just drinking water. Uh, check it, go check it out on the website, you got the link below. We gotta go back to an auction. All right, so the auction is about to start with the motorcycle stuff. Now they're doing all the other stuff and, and things. some things are doing pretty good money. Here's my strategy. Because some of the biggest stuff that I wanna buy, the most expensive stuff, is later. The earlier stuff, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna bid, but I'm not gonna pull the trigger unless I get it for a pretty good deal. So I wanna miss out on the older stuff. I also, uh, I got a few things early on, and then I got a pretty good gap. So during that gap, I'm gonna figure out what my, Anytime you're at an auction, you always need your stop number. And it always has to be a little bit lower than what your actual stop number is because you're always going to push it. So I got to figure out what my stop numbers are. And then let's just uh, hope that no one else wants the thing that I want as bad as I want it, but that they don't know something that I don't know because uh, that could be a possibility. So let's go buy something crazy. Come on. All right, so right now I bought one thing that I had no plans on buying. I didn't, I'm not even sure very much what it is, but it seemed cheap. But the stuff at the auction, some stuff is some stuff is doing crazy money. I saw something do double, triple what it what it should have done. I'm like, it should have done 20, it did 40 or 60. And then some stuff is actually doing uh, cheap. That one BMW went for half of what they suggested, it, what they thought it was going to do. So there's there's, I have no idea what's going to happen. There's still a couple bikes I'm still looking at buying, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. We got to get back in there. All right, so the next bike coming up is the KLR Diesel. I already got one. I got a bunch of money in mine. I am kind of torn. If it does cheap enough, I'm gonna get it. But also, I don't want another project because it cost me a lot of money to get mine fixed, and I have no idea what type of condition that one is. That one's in. It could, I, I just have no idea. So I don't really have my number dialed in yet, but um, it's coming up, so if it does cheap, I'm gonna get it. Runs on JP8 diesel fuel with a five-speed gearbox. Slam a tree, begin to the first house, cut her down, six house, another pay it out, seven. Then seven pound, pay it down, 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 I won some, lost a bunch. Didn't, a lot of them I didn't get, they were doing too much. I wasn't confident about spending that much money on it, but now I got my mind focused on one bike. Kind of a bike that I, I can't get my mind off of. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Let's see if I can get it. Now this might be a situation where I might do something stupid. That's all part of, that's all part of the auction. All right, let's do it. Engine, tank shift, four speed manual, sold on the bill of sale. 
at 40, baby, you better get 5, baby, you better get 50,000, you better get 5, 60,000, you better get 5, 70, at 70,000, you better get 70, baby, you better get 70, baby, you better get 65, 70, at 5, baby, you better get 75, 75, 70, baby, 5, 80, at 80,000, you better get 80, baby, you better get 5, baby, you better get 80, baby, 5, at 85,000, you better get 85, baby, you better get 5, baby, you better get 80, baby, 5, at 85,000, you better get 82, 85, 82 is the bid, you better get 85, I have 82,000 dollar bid, you better get 85,000. I just bought a hundred thousand dollar motorcycle. Let's get out of here before I have to buy something else. So I went inside and I paid the nice lady. Then we realized that we had a problem and that one of the motorcycles that I bought, we couldn't find it. So we asked for some help. They couldn't find it. They asked for some help and they couldn't find it. So at one point we had about 10 people trying to help us find this motorcycle that maybe doesn't even exist. They had a fine print on that bike that if the museum ever dissolved that it was going to go back to the owner. So Jill gave that bike back. Oh, didn't tell us. So that's why we sold it to you. So the one bike I bought was this awesome 60 something red and chrome BSA 650 for 4,500 bucks. I was so pumped about it. Had no, I did. It's it's best to buy bikes that you've never seen before, <laughs> and you're going in completely blind. And then we find out that the reason I went in completely blind was because the bike wasn't even there. And which is probably why no one else bid on it because and no one else is cunning enough to bid on a motorcycle that they didn't see before, even though it's a good price. But I did get something awesome. And that takes us to present day, which is right now, right here. All right, so let's bust this thing open. Now, uh, it's not on fire. It's, you know, theatrics. And it is the worst box. You guys see it? There's no way there's too smoke. I can't see anything. Hold up, hold up. Oh, it's still, it's still, it's still making smoke. Turn it off. How do we get the smoke out? Open the door, yeah. Can you see it now? Hold on, come down here. It's so beautiful. That right there is a 1937 Harley Davidson knucklehead. All right, so the Harley Davidson knucklehead is one of the most rarest and valuable and sought after Harley Davidson of the pre, actually, I was gonna say of the pre-war, but just kind of ever. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Sean, why'd you spend so much money on a motorcycle? You don't know what you're doing. Well, I, I made a few phone calls. I did make a phone call to my buddy, Matt, at Wheels Through Time. He gave me some general guidelines. Here's the thing though. We actually don't know how long it's been in a museum. It's been in a museum for a long time. We don't know if it runs. So when it comes to these old motorcycles, the, the, the more original they are, it skyrockets in value. If that turns out to be original paint, that's a $200,000 motorcycle. That's what we're gonna find out on the next video. I'm pumped and uh, hopefully we'll get it running by then. All right, I know you guys are thinking, Sean, why don't you buy that mad dog bike? I left before the auction was up, before that mad, because I was so concerned I was gonna, like, I just got done buying this, that's a lot of money. I did, however, contact the guy who bought the mad dog. He also lives in Tennessee. So we might get the test drive it. I'm really excited about it. Look over there. See that green bike in the corner? No, no, don't show him too much. Don't show him too much. It's back. It's back. Stay tuned. We get the diesel bike fixed. Subscribe. See you guys next time. I gotta get this thing out of here.